What's up, everyone? I am Wink. And I am Kills. And this is Scream Cheese. Today, we're going to be talking about Fright Night from 1985, directed by Tom Holland and starring Chris Sarandon, William Ragsdale, and Amanda Bierce. A young kid in high school is suspicious that his new neighbor is a vampire. Obviously, this is kind of a cult classic. There was this time when I was like in grade school at a slumber party where this was a movie that we rented and we started watching like 10 or 15 minutes and we turned it off. And ever since then, I've kind of had this idea that I kind of get what the movie's about and I'm not really all that interested. So when we were watching it, I was trying to not let that inform me because when you brought it up, I was like, ah, that's probably a movie we should watch. I don't really feel like it, but I'm glad he brought it up. I, let's let's do it. And I I really enjoyed it. I probably would have enjoyed it more if I had seen it back when I was younger. The day after I watched it, I watched the third act again. I think I dug it even more the second time around. And I feel like it's kind of grown on me. I told you I even watched like a panel of like the cast talking about it. I'm not crazy about the film, but I respect it. And I'm, I'm rather intrigued by it anyway. I have kind of a similar experience as you. I had just heard that it was kind of a horror comedy. I'm really weird about horror comedies. I enjoy a horror comedy where it picks one side or the other completely. And so I actually like things like Scary Movie or Haunted House where it's straight comedy, but it's against the backdrop of making fun of these horror films. I can totally enjoy those because I know what kind of experience I'm in for. When you mix those two genres, which are my two favorite genres in film, it just a lot of times doesn't work for me. Like Shaun of the Dead, for example. I know that's a good film and people love it, but it just didn't work for me. So going into this, I was kind of fearful of that. And I can say that there was nothing to worry about because there was campiness and I guess there was humor, but it was definitely grounded in like 80s horror. I was very surprised at how much I liked it. I'm sure if I would have seen this when it had come out, that it might have been one of my favorites. I don't have the nostalgia for it. I almost feel like I should when I'm watching it, but I don't. I like the premise. Probably most people watching this are going to be horror fans. So it's kind of a clever idea to make the main character into horror films. And then he runs into the situation. By the time it got to the third act, there was so much tension like I was kind of on the edge of my seat like I really wanted to know like how this was going to resolve itself but yeah I, I love the soundtrack um, and the score to me one of the biggest stars in the film were the practical effects they were really good it's just funny because nowadays we don't see too many films with those type of effects and it was kind of cool to see a film that had really good practical effects for the time that I hadn't seen yet and I really loved the main guy who played the main vampire there was something about him that I bought into I'm like this guy's cool he is a vampire and he's a badass and I agree with your take on him I think I would actually say that about the entire cast in that there was something special about how much everybody in that movie seemed to care about their character. They all mm -hmm. kind of fit what they're playing. It almost feels like theater. Looking into it, they, they actually rehearsed it like it was theater. They all had kind of given their characters biographies, and I think you can really actually get kind of a sense of that. I also love the practical effects. That's probably like the, the thing that appeals the most to me is the fact that like there are these kind of amazing little pieces of actual effects happening throughout. I, I think that there is something really special about the movie. I can tell that my like sense of nostalgia wants to like kick in, but I just don't have it for for the movie, you know? But yeah. I can tell that there's something special about it and I did really enjoy it. The one thing that's, you know, crystal clear when you're watching it is this is an 80s film and I, and I love that stuff. So mm -hmm. I would have liked a little bit more development with the characters' relationships. And what I mean by that is I feel like with Charlie and his friend Ed, they could have done a little bit more early on to establish like the nature of the relationship. And the same thing goes for Charlie and Amy. Unfortunately, since I didn't see this when it first came out, I only know Amanda Burse from Married with Children. Right, same. So it was very hard to get that out of my head. The way she acts, she's really good. She's a really good actress and I, I really like her. But I just couldn't get out of my head that this is the lady from Married with Children. And I was continually reminded of that fact. So I don't know that she was necessarily the best person in my mind for this role, but she was very good. I mean, particularly when she's at the nightclub with Jerry and the music's playing and there's like, 
seduction going on. I thought she did excellent. I thought she was excellent at the end. I think it did just about everything it set out to do pretty perfectly. I felt the same way about Amanda Bierce. All I could think was married with children. Every time that I saw her, I was like, wait, wasn't what was that relationship like? Wasn't she like super annoying and like, I don't know. The one like little pet peeve that I have is just that I'm fairly certain that Peter Vincent uses a cross to burn on Evil Ed's head when he turns, right? Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and shortly after that, he holds up a cross to Jerry and Jerry says, for me, and that's the only line that almost like puts a band-aid on it. For me, you have to have faith for that to work essentially. Yeah. And, and it mm -hmm. seemed like, uh, uh, that's a little plot hole. His faithless cross worked fine on Evil Ed, but you need to have faith for like the main vampire. I don't know. It just seemed like a tiny little plot hole. Yeah, there was little moments like that. Here's the thing. It, it may not be a plot hole if we watched it a few times or we read about it. There well, might be an I explanation for it. I could potentially have it like backwards. I don't know. Um, now it could be because Ed is a new vampire and maybe he's not as powerful. I don't know. I do love the idea of you have to have faith because I don't like the idea that just if crosses started falling out of the sky on vampires, they're going to melt. So I like the idea that it's a symbol, but you have to have somebody behind it who actually believes in it. It's kind of like the whole concept of they can't come into your house unless you invite them. But yeah, it was really, really good. Again, if I saw this when I was younger, I would have probably really, really liked this a lot. I wish I was more enthusiastic about it. I mean, I, I thought it was a really like charming movie. The practical effects were awesome. There's very little that I didn't like, but I wasn't just like super enthusiastic about it, I guess. I give it a seven. Is that cool? Can, is that's, that okay with you? That's super cool. So I'm giving it a 7.5, which is again, surprising to me. But when I really think about it, it's kind of like you. It's a great film. It's just, unfortunately, we saw it way too late. So the fact that we're both giving it seven pluses basically shows that we probably would have loved it if we would have seen it when we were younger. Yeah, I am actually really stoked to see the remake. And, and I am kind of stoked to see the sequel. And I believe the remake has a sequel as well, right? From the little bit I've read on it, obviously the original sequel isn't as good as the original, but people say it's a better film than you would think. I've heard from a number of people that the remake is actually pretty good too, just not as good as the original. But the, the sequel to the remake I heard is kind of junk because it's actually not a sequel to the remake. It's just redoing the film, but this time the vampire is a female. Woman. Yeah. It sounds like it's not going to be good because it basically sounds like they did another remake. It was crappy. And then they put um, Fright Night 2 on it. Gotcha. A way of like trying to cover it up and market it. So I bet but, that's yeah, what I'm, happened, man. But I know that in the original sequel, the only thing I know about it is um, Charlie goes to college. But his sister, who's still living at home, is now the main character. But, you know, it's interesting. Tom Holland himself wanted to do a sequel to it. And his concept was that it was going to be down the road. His mother's passed away and he's living in, in her house. And he's a single father now with two kids and another vampire moves in next door. But it, it doesn't really matter of the concept. If Tom Holland would have done it, I'm sure it would have been pretty good. Well, um, <laughs> that was Fright Night. All right. Yeah, Fright Night. <laughs> Woohoo! All right, well, thanks for hanging out with us talking about Fright Night from 1985. Is it a classic? Hell yeah, it is, man. Yeah, it's Absolutely. a classic. It's, it's definitely a classic. All right, folks, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and let us know in the comment section what scary movies we should talk about next. And we will see you next time. Peace out, cheesers. Peace out.